is Sufi Jodou, I am a Montreal-based artist, and the title of the exhibition is Close Your Eyes. The exhibition Close Your Eyes this spans a course of four years, and it includes um, three main bodies of works, um, the titles of Small Dramas and Little Nothings, Chard and Vigils, and these are all black and white drawings and collages. But I al I'm also showing a video, a sculptural piece, and four tables that exhibit different artifacts. There is always um, a sense of this quiet, of um, uneasiness, of foreboding, of anticipation in my work. And this general sense of malaise is really what guides my choice of imagery and how I construct my narratives. If we look at the exhibition, even the title of uh, the exhibition, Close Your Eyes, as this kind of, uh, it puts you on at ease because you don't know where to stand when you read it. It can be, and I have conceived it as a whisper. I read it as, uh, as almost what I call a tender lullaby against pain, you close your eyes. But it's also an impossibility. It's, it, it is futile to say that you can close your eyes to the pain of others. So you're kind of stuck in between and you have to decide on your own. And same thing when, when you walk in, you have these hands that greet you, but at the same time are forewarning you. Uh, you walk in and you have this large body of works, which is a collection that I call almost of shattered stories uh, that speak about loneliness, abandonment, um, cruelty, spoiled innocence, and so, and they were very intimate works and very um, detailed and, and so you don't expect that when you come, it's only when you come close to them and you start reading them that you're a little bit disarmed by them because it's, it's pain to a degree on a large scale but contained in these very small works. Charred are five burnt bungalows and uh, you can't head, anyway, I think you can't um, help thinking when you look at them, did what I just witnessed in the small dramas, these little stories, these tragedies, did they just happen behind the facades of these houses? So I would say the discomfort here is very much into uh, a house is a domestic place where you're supposed to find happiness and comfort, but also there's all kind of dramas that happen behind the wind, you know, behind the facades. Um, and then you enter the last room and you're facing these large, heavy, heavy in their materiality, but in heavy in their stillness, and they're looming, these looming shapes, and you are drawn into them. You don't have much of a choice. And, and also, you, on the tables, you have all these little scattered things that I found on the streets, but also book dedications and ink drawings that remind us of who we are, traces that we left behind. So um, there is the um, anticipation again of your own mortality to come. When I was um, approached to, to show, I was, I was uh, invited to show at Richmond, and I found the architecture of the space really particular, unusual, but very interesting and a challenge also. And I thought, how could I have these diverse bodies of work linking themselves together? And so the installation, the material installation really is a parallel to what I was saying before about um, someone wandering through the space. I thought that maybe each space would become almost like a chamber, a different stage of one's life. And this, um, this, this, this dialogue that I often call it uh, between works, I often think when I conceive of an exhibition, I think about music, like a musical score, and all the works are like notes and multiple voices that echo and reverberate through the gallery space. I'm often asked if I work f for my imagination or from visual sources, and um, it took me a long time to assume or embrace the fact that I've, I do not work from my imagination. All my work is based and created from um, actual existing 
material. These sources used to be much more uh, traditional in the sense that I would often hire a model, I would draw the model and take photographs, and then the works would be done from these photographs. Nowadays, and that's about maybe four years now, my sources are really varied. Um, it can be um, images taken from the internet, from uh, magazines that I find, films, uh, things I find in the street, uh, anything goes really. Um, I like collecting and gathering things. I seem to think it's almost like archaeology, you're doing an excavation and you're just collecting these things. They're often not for an immediate use. Um, I just like uh, having all these things around in case. Often one day I might be sitting and I'm flipping through a book and I'm looking at an image and that will trigger an idea that which will be developed into a body of work. I studied in Quebec, so I took graphic design for uh, one term only on a college level and I found out that I really didn't like that, so I enrolled in the visual art program at Concordia University. And when I was there, I gave up my painting classes really early on and mainly focused on drawing and sculpture with an emphasis on the human figure. And these interests have really remained at the core of my work since. Drawing has always been, uh, has always played a really important role for me, um, and I've never um, ceased to use it, even though there was a stretch of time um, that I went and I started to work in color and was painting a little bit more. But in, in 2004, I decided um, to go back to black and white and give up color. I felt uncomfortable with the, the seductiveness associated with color and painting. And um, came with this different other formal decisions, of course, which were the, uh, to, I want to strip away um, anything superfluous in the drawing. So there's a lot of, you don't see any context, any backgrounds. And the work itself is really, it's focused on the central motif and are developed into large bodies of works. Uh, collage has played a huge role uh, for me and really has changed my approach to drawing. Uh, basically all my drawings now incorporate drawings or are based on uh, original collages which become the maquette to create the drawings. I just find that the technique of collage just with its free association of combination of all kind of diverse imagery really has helped to expand my visual vocabulary and open up new directions that I might not have thought of at all. Drawing for me is much more about um, a process, about how I approach art making. So it's a way of being, it's an attitude. And I can, um, let's say with the videos, and there is one in the exhibition, when I conceive of them, they are constructed like drawing. So they share the same visual language. They are monochrome. They are very minimal. Here you have again a figure, because it is based on a drawing, a figure moving against this large expanse of white. So it can be a work which is embroidered. It can be a work which is set in a light box or etched into a glass. I always think about them as drawings or as writing even. Uh, what links them together is really um, their minimalist qualities and the sense of malaise that they often evoke in the viewer. Sometimes people are always curious what an artist would like the um, viewer to partake with and when they do see an exhibition and if we keep in mind that these are all suggested stories uh, for them to connect or not with, then it's, the, it's for them to create their own relationship depending where they come from, how old they are, they'll all take something different out of it. And if they can end up recognizing a little bit a part of themselves into it, maybe they'll start reflecting on their own life and existence.